It was a nice summer evening, and the sun was about to set, making long shadows on the ground. My dad and I were at a far-off camping spot, right next to a calm lake. The air smelled like pine trees and wet soil, showing how close we were to the thick forest near our camp. We had a habit of exploring this forest, attracted by a beautiful waterfall deep inside it. As we started our walk, the forest was full of nature sounds, like leaves moving and an owl hooting in the distance. We saw a pile of cut-up wood, which is usual in the woods, but something was strange. On top of the pile was a small kid's shoe, old and dusty. It was a weird sight, the simple shoe against the wild forest. We kept walking, forgetting about the shoe, until we came to a small open area. My dad went off to use the bathroom, and I looked away to give him privacy. That's when we heard it, a child's voice saying clearly, I'm over here. We both stopped. My dad looked at me, confused. He thought it was me, but then he realized it wasn't. We spent the next 30 minutes searching the area, shouting out, looking for any sign of a child. But we found nothing, no one. The forest was quiet, except for the sound of our breathing and our hearts beating. The waterfall didn't seem interesting anymore, and we decided to go back to camp. As we were going back, the forest seemed different, more scary. The quiet was broken by the sound of sticks breaking, bushes moving, as if something was following us. We walked faster, wanting to get back to the safety of our camp. We got back to camp, feeling relieved. We spent the night in our tent, the sounds of the forest reminding us of what happened. We left the next morning, promising never to camp there again. The memory of that walk, the child's voice, the feeling of being followed, still scares me. It was a strong reminder of how unpredictable and mysterious nature can be. But it also taught us respect, respect for the unknown, respect for the power and the mystery of nature. We haven't been camping there since, but the experience has stayed with us, a scary but important memory in our minds. It was a normal midnight, the kind where the moon was the only light, making everything look spooky. We were in a big park, a place where people like to walk during the day, but at this time, it was empty. The open space where we sat was made for picnics, with a few tables here and there. The nearby river reflected the moonlight, making a dreamy, almost magical scene. My boyfriend and I were sitting at one of the picnic tables, enjoying our alone time. The mood was exciting, full of the fun of being alone in such a big, open place. I was looking at the river, its calm flow making a relaxing background sound to our adventure. He was looking the other way towards the thick, dark trees. As the night went on, we got lost in each other, forgetting about everything else. Suddenly, he tensed up, his eyes stuck on something behind me. In a quiet, serious voice, he said, There's a man coming towards us. I turned around and saw a person coming out of the trees. All I could see was a white t-shirt, lit up by the moonlight, moving towards us quickly. I got scared, and without thinking, I ran, knowing he would follow. The man in the white shirt was very close, probably within 25 feet, when we started running. He didn't say anything, just kept walking quickly towards us. We didn't look back, didn't stop until we were far away from the open space. That night left a big mark on me. The fear, the rush, the feeling of being chased it was all too real. I promised myself I wouldn't go on midnight adventures in the forest after that. The memory of the man in the white shirt quietly coming towards us still gives me goosebumps. The experience taught me a good lesson about safety and the importance of being aware of what's around us. It was a clear reminder that while nature can be beautiful and peaceful, it can also be unpredictable and scary. From then on, I made sure to respect its rules and never underestimate its potential for danger. It was a scary encounter, but it also served as a wake-up call, a reminder to always be ready and alert especially when going into the unknown. I used to jog when it was dark. The night was my comfort, and the quiet was my friend. The moonlight would make long, spooky shadows that moved with the rustling leaves, creating a soothing and exciting night scene. 
One special night, I chose to take a different path, one that took me through a thick, old forest. The trees were tall above me, their branches stretching out like bony hands against the night sky. The path was small and twisty, hardly seen under the thick tree cover. As I jogged, I could hear the sound of leaves crunching under my feet, the far-off hoot of an owl, the gentle sound of the wind. It was calm, but there was a feeling of worry, a basic fear that hid in the shadows. Suddenly, I felt something touch my face. It was soft, but sticky, like a thin curtain trying to stick to me. I realized I had jogged straight into a spider web. Fear rushed through me. I threw my hands towards my face, trying hard to wipe away the unseen threads. Then I felt it. Something big and heavy landed on the top of my head. It felt like a small animal, maybe a squirrel or a bird. I screamed, my heart beating fast in my chest. I reached up, my hands shaking, and grabbed onto it. But it wasn't an animal. It was my own ponytail, falling forward because of my wild movements. Relief came over me, but it was quickly replaced by embarrassment. I laughed at my own silliness, my laughter echoing through the quiet forest. I continued my jog, my heart still beating fast from the rush. The forest no longer seemed calm, but rather full of hidden dangers hiding in the shadows. But I knew it was all in my mind, my imagination going crazy. When I finally came out of the forest, I felt a sense of achievement. I had faced my fear, no matter how silly it was, and came out stronger. The rest of my jog was normal, but the memory of that night stayed with me. From then on, every time I put on my running shoes, I would remember that night in the forest. It was a reminder that fear is often just in our minds, and sometimes, the things we're scared of are not as scary as they seem. And most importantly, it taught me to always tie my hair back when I go for a jog. It was the late 90s, and I was on a trip to Syria from Australia. The air was full of new smells, and the moon was low in the sky, making long shadows on the ground. I decided to go for a walk, to see the beauty of this new place under the moonlight. While I was walking, I saw two shapes in the distance, about 30 meters away. They were lit up by the bright moon, and at first, they looked like dogs. But when I looked closer, I noticed something strange. Their faces, they looked almost human. I was scared and I froze. They started to come closer to me, until they were just 10 meters away. The moonlight showed their faces clearly, and they looked even more human. One of them made a low growling sound that scared me. In a panic, I shot my gun, which I was carrying for safety. The sound echoed in the quiet night, and the dogs ran away, disappearing into the dark. I didn't waste any time. I turned around and went back home, always looking behind me, expecting to see those dogs again. The laughter and warmth of the house felt safe after the scary encounter. I told my aunt about what I had seen, and to my surprise everyone in the house started laughing. Apparently it was a local legend, a story that had been told for generations. Everyone had a story about these dogs. It was their way of welcoming newcomers. But I knew what I had seen and it wasn't funny. Those dogs, with their human-like faces, were as real as the fear I felt. I didn't care if it was a local legend or a ghost story. All I knew was that I had seen something that I couldn't explain, something that didn't make sense. And that was enough for me. I promised myself that I would never go out alone at night in Syria again. Because sometimes, the scariest stories are the ones that are true. It was a dark night with only a thin slice of the moon visible when I started my walk up Pike's Peak on the Devil's Playground path. The air was fresh, and the only noise was the sound of my shoes on the gravel. I began my journey at three in the morning, hoping to avoid the heat and cover a good distance before sunrise. The path was about 14 miles in total, a tough but doable distance for someone like me who hikes a lot. About three miles into the hike, my flashlight spotted something on the path. Two bright spots were looking back at me, cutting through the darkness. My heart was racing. I had seen mountain lions during my hikes before, 
but they usually stayed away. This one didn't. It just kept staring at me, not blinking at all. I tried to recall what I knew about mountain lions. Make a lot of noise, try to look bigger, don't run away. I started yelling, waving my arms, shaking my backpack. But the bright spots didn't move. It seemed to be getting closer. I was scared. I decided to run towards it, hoping to frighten it away. I shouted as loud as I could, holding one of my walking sticks in front of me like a weapon, and ran towards the bright spots. As I got closer, I realized my mistake. It wasn't a mountain lion. It was a wrapper from a granola bar, its shiny surface reflecting my flashlight and making it look like eyes. I stopped out of breath, my heart still beating fast. I felt relieved, but then I felt angry. Throwing trash in such a beautiful place was not just rude, it was dangerous. I picked up the wrapper and put it in my backpack. The rest of my hike was quiet, but I kept thinking about the mountain lion. It was a strong reminder of how our actions can affect the environment and how important it is to protect these wild areas for future generations. When I reached the top of Pike's Peak, I looked out over the huge area of wilderness. The sun was just starting to rise, casting a golden light on the landscape. Despite the scare, I felt calm and happy. I had faced my fear, learned an important lesson, and finished a tough hike. And as I stood there, the wrapper in my backpack felt like a small win against the thoughtlessness of those who would ruin such a beautiful place. It was a reminder that every action, no matter how small, counts in protecting these precious environments for us and for future generations. I've always loved exploring new places, so when I found out about the amazing camping spot at Wilson State Park in Kansas, I couldn't resist. This park was a public place for fun and relaxation, located on the southern edge of a huge lake. The camping area was big, with an amazing view of the lake and the wild area around it. The air was clean, and you could hear the sounds of nature everywhere. One day, I decided to rent a small house near the lake. It was a simple, old-fashioned house, hidden among tall trees. The house was basic, with one room that was used as both a living room and a bedroom. There was a small area for cooking on one side and a tiny bathroom on the other. The house was old but well-kept, and it felt warm and inviting. The first few days were calm. I spent my time walking around the park, hiking through the thick woods, and fishing in the lake. The nights were silent with only the sound of the wind moving through the trees and the far-off sound of an owl. But then, things started to get weird. One night, I was woken up by a strange sound. It sounded like something was scratching at the door. I got up and looked, but there was nothing there. I thought it might be a small animal like a raccoon, so I didn't worry too much. The next night, the same thing happened. This time, the scratching was louder, more frantic. I checked again but still, there was nothing. I started to feel nervous. The quiet house in the woods was starting to feel less safe. On the third night, I decided to stay up and find out what was making the noise. I sat in the dark, waiting. Then, just after midnight, the scratching started again. This time, it was followed by a low growl. My heart was beating fast as I slowly walked towards the door. I opened it quickly, ready to face whatever was outside. But there was nothing. The night was silent and still. I stood there, at the door, looking out into the darkness. I felt a cold shiver run down my back. Something was wrong. I decided to leave the next morning. I packed up my stuff and left the house as the sun was coming up. As I drove away, I looked in the rearview mirror. The house looked calm, lit up by the soft morning light. But I knew better. I knew that something was not right about that place. I never found out what was making the noise. Maybe it was just a wild animal, or maybe it was something else. But one thing was certain, I was not going back to that house. The memory of those nights still gives me the creeps. But I learned something important from that experience sometimes. The most beautiful places can hide the scariest secrets. I've always loved my evening strolls in the countryside where I live. 
The peaceful quiet, the sound of leaves, the occasional meeting with animals black bears, coyotes, bobcats, and even sometimes angry deer. But one night, my calm routine was broken by a meeting that was anything but normal. It began with the far-off sound of pop music, getting louder as it got closer. A strange smell filled the air, sweet and strong, like candy floss at a fair. Then, out of the dark, a small black truck appeared, its body covered with rainbow and unicorn stickers that glowed strangely in the moonlight. The first time it drove past me, it swerved suddenly, heading straight for me. I jumped out of the way, my heart beating fast in my chest. I brushed it off, thinking they were just surprised by my reflective clothes in the dark. But then, the truck came back. I saw the headlights coming and quickly picked up my dog, jumping into a nearby ditch just in time. The sound of high-pitched, crazy laughter came from the truck, making me feel cold. It was the innocent but creepy giggle of a little girl, a sound that didn't belong in the middle of nowhere at this time. The truck passed a third time, but by then, I was hidden in my neighbor's bushes, my heart beating hard in my chest. I watched as it slowly drove down the road, the giggling still heard as it passed my hiding spot. The truck didn't stop, it just kept going, its rear lights disappearing into the night. I waited for what felt like forever before I dared to move. When I finally got home, I locked all the doors and windows, feeling uneasy. That night, the peaceful countryside I loved felt a little less peaceful, a little less safe. From then on, my evening strolls were filled with a touch of fear, a constant reminder of the creepy meeting. But I didn't let it stop me. I continued my walks, always watchful, always alert. Because sometimes, the scariest things aren't the wild animals hiding in the woods, but the unknown plans of people in the dark. I always wanted to see the wild side of Alaska, so I chose to stay at a cabin in the Talk RV Village Campground and Cabins. It was a family-run place, known for being clean and having friendly staff. The park was welcoming to large vehicles with over 100 drive through spots, tent areas, cabins, and new fancy camping tents. Each spot was surrounded by well-cut trees and plants, giving you a real feel of Alaska. The day I got there, the sun was going down, spreading a golden light over the wide open space. The cabin was tucked between tall pine trees, their shadows playing on the wooden outside. The air was cool and fresh, filled with the smell of pine and soil. The quiet was only broken by the occasional sound of leaves moving and the far-off call of an owl. The cabin was snug and old-fashioned, with a small kitchen, a comfy bed, and a wood-burning heater. It was the perfect spot to relax and enjoy some alone time. I spent my days discovering the wild area around me, walking through thick forests, and fishing in the river close by. One night, just as I was falling asleep, I heard a weird sound outside. It sounded like leaves crunching under heavy shoes. My heart was beating fast as I quietly moved towards the window. Looking out, I saw a big shadow moving around the cabin. I held my breath, hoping it would leave. Suddenly, the shadow moved closer, and I could see it more clearly. It was a bear, probably drawn by the smell of the fish I had caught earlier. I watched in shock and fear as it sniffed around, then, Losing interest, it walked off into the dark. The rest of the night was restless, but as the sun came up, I felt a sense of relief. The bear encounter was scary, but it was also a reminder of the raw and wild beauty of Alaska. I spent the rest of my trip with a heightened sense of awareness and respect for the wild. As I packed up to leave, I took one last look at the cabin and the surrounding forest. The experience had been both exciting and humbling a reminder of the power and beauty of nature. I left the cabin with a sense of achievement and a story to tell, a story of a solo adventure in the Alaskan wild, a story of survival and respect for nature. And so, my adventure at the Talk RV Village campground and cabins ended. The memories of the cabin, the bear, and the breathtaking Alaskan wild will stay with me forever. It was a journey of self-discovery and a testament to the power and beauty of nature. And although it was scary at times, it was an experience I wouldn't trade for anything.
I've always loved exploring, so when I planned a solo trip to a popular campground in Branson, Missouri, I was really excited. The campsite was peaceful, located in the middle of the Ozark Mountains. The tall trees, the sound of birds, and the noise of leaves moving in the wind were like a calming nature song. The cabin I rented was simple and comfortable, hidden in a quiet corner of the campsite. It was a basic wooden cabin, with a small front porch and a window that showed the large forest outside. Inside, there was a small kitchen area, a comfy bed, and a wood-burning stove that gave the place a country feel. The first few days were wonderful. I spent my time walking on the trails, fishing in the nearby stream, and enjoying being alone. But as the days turned into nights, I started to feel a strange feeling. It wasn't anything ghostly, but rather the creepy quiet of the forest at night, the shadows made by the moonlight, and the odd noises that seemed to come from nowhere. One night, as I was about to fall asleep, I heard a noise outside my cabin. I thought it was a deer or some other forest animal, but the noise kept going. I decided to check it out. I took my flashlight and went outside, the light cutting through the dark. As I moved towards the noise, my heart was beating fast. Suddenly, I saw two glowing eyes looking at me. I froze, holding my breath. It was a bear, its large body lit up by the moonlight. We looked at each other for what felt like forever before it turned and walked off into the forest. I let out a breath I didn't know I was holding and went back to the safety of my cabin. Seeing the bear was a strong reminder of the wild and untouched beauty of nature. It was a humbling experience, one that made me respect the wilderness even more. I spent the rest of my trip being more aware, taking in the sights and sounds of the forest with a new appreciation. As I packed up to leave, I took one last look at the cabin and the campsite. Despite the scare, I felt peaceful and satisfied. My solo trip to the campsite had been an adventure a journey of learning about myself, and a proof of the power and beauty of nature. It was a trip I would remember for the rest of my life. I've always loved being outdoors. I couldn't resist the allure of the natural world, so I decided to rent a small cabin at Norris Campground, a well-known camping area in Wyoming. It's situated right in the heart of Yellowstone National Park, encircled by towering pine trees and offering plenty of activities. The campground was vast, with over 100 simple camping sites. My cabin was cozy and situated in a peaceful corner of the campground. The air was crisp and carried the scent of pine trees and earth. The only sounds were the occasional chirping of birds and the rustling of leaves. On the first day, I visited the nearby Norris Geyser Basin, which was just a short walk from the campground. The geysers were a sight to behold, with steam shooting high into the clear blue sky. I spent the day wandering around, taking in the stunning views of the park. When night fell, I returned to my cabin. The forest was almost pitch black, save for the gentle glow of the moon. I started a fire, and its comforting light filled the small cabin. The only sound was the crackling of the fire. Suddenly, I heard something stirring outside. I froze, my heart pounding. I thought it was probably just a deer or some other harmless creature. But the noise grew louder and closer. I could now hear heavy breathing, right outside the cabin. I grabbed a flashlight and mustered the courage to open the door. The beam from the flashlight pierced the darkness, but there was nothing there. The noise had ceased, and the breathing was gone. I was alone. I went back inside, my heart still racing. I made sure the doors and windows were locked then tried to relax and go to sleep. But sleep was elusive. Every sound, every shadow, made me startle. When morning arrived, I went outside. There were no signs of any animal. No footprints, no broken branches. Nothing. The fear from the night before seemed foolish in the daylight. I spent the rest of my stay exploring the park, but every night was the same. The noise, the heavy breathing, always just outside the cabin, but there was never anything there. On the last day, as I was packing up to leave, I found something. A small, shiny object half buried in the dirt near the cabin. It was a locket, old and worn. Inside was a picture of a man, dressed in old-timey clothes. 
I asked the park rangers about it. They told me a story about a man who had lived in the area over a hundred years ago. He had vanished without a trace, leaving behind only his cabin. I left the campground that day, the locket in my pocket. I felt a strange connection to the man. We were both drawn to this place, both spent our nights in that cabin, listening to the sounds of nature. In the end, the trip was not what I had anticipated. It was frightening, it was unsettling, but it was also intriguing. I had come in search of an adventure, and I found a mystery. And even though I may never know what was making the noise outside my cabin those nights, the experience was something I'll always remember. In 2022, my friend and I went on a camping trip. We planned to walk four miles to a camping site by following a river trail. We thought it would be best to split the walk into two days, doing half on the first day, sleeping at the halfway point, and finishing the rest on the second day. The first day was pretty normal. We set up our hammocks at the halfway point and fell asleep to the calming sounds of the river. The next morning, I woke up to a surprising sight. Two little kids, a girl about six or seven and a boy around four or five, were standing on the trail, looking at us. The girl waved, and I waved back, expecting to see their parents coming up behind them. But there were no adults around. The little girl then said, We're lost. My heart dropped. The trail we were on had several river crossings. It was about nine in the morning, and these kids had somehow wandered about a mile away from their family's camping spot crossing the river multiple times. Their clothes were wet, and they were shaking from the cold. My friend and I quickly packed up our stuff. We wrapped the kids in our extra clothes and started walking back the way they had come. The kids were brave but obviously scared. We tried to cheer them up, pointing out cool plants and animals along the way. After what seemed like forever, we finally saw a group of tents in the distance. As we got closer, a man and a woman came running towards us. The relief on their faces when they saw their children safe and sound was something I can't put into words. They thanked us over and over, and we told them that anyone would have done the same. As we walked away, I couldn't help but think about how things could have gone differently. It was a clear reminder of how unpredictable nature can be and the importance of always being ready. That day, a simple camping trip had turned into a rescue mission. But in the end, everyone was safe, and that's all that mattered. It was a scary experience, but it also showed the importance of community and looking out for each other, even when you least expect it. The sun was going down, making long shadows on the small walking path. I was by myself, with only the quiet of the wild around me. Nothing much happened that day. I didn't see any other walkers. Being alone was both calming and a bit spooky. Suddenly, I heard a noise. My heart started beating fast when I saw a bunch of baby pigs come out from the bushes, walking on the path just a few steps ahead of me. They were adorable and seemed harmless, not knowing they could be a threat. I knew that where there were baby pigs, their mom would be close by. I listened carefully, trying to find her. I heard a low noise from the bushes but I couldn't tell if she was in front of the babies or hiding behind me. The path was small, with thick plants on both sides. There was no safe place to run. This thought scared me. I was stuck, alone, with a possibly angry wild pig. I remembered reading somewhere that pigs don't like loud noises. I quickly took out my phone, my hands shaking as I opened Spotify. I picked the loudest, most upbeat song I could think of Britney Spears, Toxic. I turned the volume all the way up and hit play. The music filled the quiet forest, the catchy beats bouncing off the trees. The baby pigs got scared and ran back into the bushes. The noise from the mother stopped suddenly. I stood still, my heart still beating fast, the music still playing from my phone. After what felt like forever, I slowly started moving, keeping the music playing as I carefully kept walking on the path. Nothing else happened on the rest of the walk. The sun had completely set by the time I got to the end of the path, the stars shining in the clear sky. I breathed a sigh of relief. 
I had faced a possibly dangerous situation and came out okay. As I drove home, the rush slowly fading, I couldn't help but laugh. I had survived a close call with wild pigs, all thanks to Britney Spears. It was a walk I would never forget. The wild, being alone, the fear, the relief it was a strong reminder of how unpredictable nature can be and how small we are. But most importantly it taught me that sometimes, all you need to survive is a bit of bravery, quick thinking, and a fun soundtrack. It was a normal Sunday morning. The sun was out, and the air smelled like pine trees. I decided to go for a walk on my favorite path, a quiet trail that went through a thick forest. This trail was usually silent, a great break from the noise of city life. While walking, I saw something strange near the trail. It was a small open area, and in the middle of it was something that scared me. It was a crime scene. The sight was scary, a harsh reminder of the bad things that can happen even in the most peaceful places. I quickly took out my phone and called the police. My hands were shaking as I told them what I had seen. They told me to stay where I was and wait for them to come. After ending the call, I felt very uneasy. I was alone in the woods, and the person who did this could still be close. Waiting for the police felt like forever. Every sound of leaves, every breaking of a twig made me scared. I couldn't stop feeling like someone was watching me. The once peaceful forest now felt dangerous and scary. Finally, I heard the far-off sound of people talking and the sound of leaves crunching under heavy boots. The police had come. I showed them the place, my heart beating fast in my chest. They took over from there, marking off the area and starting their investigation. In the following days, I was questioned and gave my statement. But despite the police's hard work, the case didn't seem to go anywhere. I never heard anything more about it. The crime scene in the woods remained an unsolved mystery. The experience changed me. The trail I once found peaceful now held a scary memory. But I refused to let fear control me. I kept going for walks, always careful but never letting the incident take away my love for the outdoors. The world can be a scary place, but we can't let fear control our lives. We must keep living, exploring, and enjoying the beauty around us, while always being aware of our surroundings. That's the lesson I learned from that scary experience in the woods. One sunny day, I decided to go for a walk in the woods near my house. The air was fresh, and the only sound was the birds singing. I always felt calm in nature, and that day was no different. But I didn't know that my peaceful walk was about to become a scary adventure. As I went deeper into the woods, I found a small path that looked less used. I was curious, so I decided to follow it. The path was bumpy, with lots of rocks and tree roots, but I walked carefully. Suddenly, I heard a crunch under my shoe. I looked down and saw that I had stepped on a hornet's nest. In a flash, about fifty hornets came out of the broken nest, buzzing loudly. Their noise filled the air, and I could feel my heart beating fast. I was in the middle of the woods, far from any help, and I had just upset a hornet's nest. I knew I was allergic to hornet stings. The thought of having a severe allergic reaction, with no phone signal to call for help and no medicine, was really scary. I felt helpless, and the fear was overwhelming. But then I remembered the bear spray I had in my bag. It was meant for possible bear encounters, but I thought it might work. I quickly took it out and sprayed it at the swarm of hornets. It worked right away. The hornets flew away, giving me a chance to run. I ran as fast as I could, not looking back. My heart was racing, and I was breathing hard, but I didn't stop until I was far from the hornet's nest. When I finally stopped to catch my breath, I realized I hadn't been stung. Not even once. That day, I learned an important lesson about respecting nature and being ready for anything. I was lucky to get away without a scratch, but the memory of that scary experience still gives me goosebumps. From that day on, I always carried medicine with me on all my walks, and I learned to stick to the main paths. It was a close call, a scary experience, 
but it made me a more careful and respectful walker. I've always loved exploring. Living in Washington State, I was lucky to be around some of the prettiest places in America. One bright morning, I decided to go on a hike by myself on the Burroughs Mountain Trail in Mount Rainier National Park. The trail was famous for its amazing views of Mount Rainier and the mountain landscape. It was a sunny day, the sun was shining, and the sky was a deep blue. The trail was tough but doable, going through quiet old forests, river valleys, and high meadows. As I went further into the trail, everything became very quiet. The only sound was the leaves crunching under my boots and my own heartbeat. Suddenly, I heard a noise in the bushes nearby. I stopped, my heart beating fast. A big, dark figure came out from the bushes. It was a bear, looking straight at me. I remembered what I'd read about meeting bears. I slowly moved back, not looking directly into its eyes. The bear watched me but didn't come after me. Once I was far enough away, I turned and walked quickly down the trail, my heart still beating fast. The rest of the hike was calm, but meeting the bear had scared me. As I got to the end of the trail, I looked back at the impressive Mount Rainier, its top glowing in the sunset. I felt proud. I had faced my fear and was okay. As I drove home, the excitement slowly went away, replaced by a feeling of calm. I realized that the trail had taught me an important lesson about respecting nature and the importance of being ready. It was a scary experience, but it also reminded me of why I loved hiking the excitement, the challenge, and the beauty of nature. One sunny morning, I went for a short walk on a path I knew well. But that day, something felt off. The forest was unusually quiet. As I walked further, I realized I was on a different path. This one was narrow and twisty. The ground was loose and crumbly, not like the solid path I was used to. The path started to go downhill, slowly at first, then more steeply. It was a steep drop, and I was stuck. I realized I was stuck on a steep hill with no way to go but down. The hill was too steep to turn around, and the loose dirt under my feet was slippery. I was scared, but I knew I had to stay calm. I sat down on the path, trying to figure out how to get down safely. I started to slide down slowly, holding onto anything I could branches, rocks, roots sticking out of the ground. Each move was slow and careful. I could feel the loose dirt moving under me threatening to make me fall down the hill. Then it happened. My hand slipped from a branch, and I slid down the hill. Dirt flew into my face, and I could feel the scrapes and bruises forming as I rolled about ten feet down the hill. When I finally stopped, I was shaken and hurt, but thankfully, not badly injured. I sat there for a moment, thinking about what had just happened. I was dirty, bruised, and my heart was beating fast. But I was alive. I felt thankful. It could have been much worse. With new determination, I got up and started the long walk back to the familiar path. The walk back was hard, but I made it. As I came out of the forest, I promised myself to always stay on the well-known path. That day, I learned an important lesson. Nature is beautiful, but it can also be harsh. It's important to respect it, to stay on the marked paths and to always be ready for the unexpected. It was a scary experience, but it also reminded me of my strength and ability to bounce back. I survived, and I came out stronger, and for that I am thankful. I've always loved exploring new places. There's something exciting about discovering new things and feeling your heart race when you're out in nature. So, when I moved to Montana, I couldn't wait to check out the famous Glacier National Park. The park was like a big outdoor playground, with its tall mountains, green forests, and clear lakes. I decided to go on a hike alone on one of the park's toughest trails, the Highline Trail. The trail was about 11.8 miles long, starting from Logan Pass and ending at the Loop. As I started my hike, the morning air was cool and refreshing. The trail was narrow and twisty, 
with a steep drop on one side and a high cliff on the other. The views were amazing, with the whole park spread out below me. As I went further into the trail, the weather started to change. Dark clouds started to gather in the sky, and a cold wind started to blow. I could hear the distant sound of thunder, and I knew a storm was coming. I started to walk faster, hoping to find a shelter before the storm hit. But the trail was dangerous, with loose rocks and slippery slopes. I had to be careful with every step I took. Suddenly, I slipped on a wet rock and lost my balance. I rolled down the slope, my backpack and gear flying around me. I managed to grab onto a tree root, stopping my fall just in time. I was shaken but not hurt. However, I lost my map and compass, and my phone was broken in the fall. I was alone, lost, and the storm was getting closer. The rain started to fall, turning the trail into a muddy, slippery mess. I decided to find a safe place and wait out the storm. I found a small cave and took shelter there. The storm lasted for hours. I could hear the loud wind and the booming thunder outside. It was a scary experience, but I knew I had to stay calm. Finally, the storm passed. I stepped out of the cave, wet and cold, but relieved. The trail was a mess, but I managed to find my way back by following the landmarks. As I reached the end of the trail, I felt proud. I had faced my fears, survived a storm, and finished the hike. It was a scary experience, but it was also a reminder of the power of nature and the importance of being ready. In the end, I realized that the real adventure wasn't just about finishing the trail, but also about overcoming my own fears and doubts. It was a journey of learning about myself, a proof of my strength and determination. And as I looked back at the trail, I knew that I had not only survived but done well in the face of challenges. I can still recall it as if it happened just yesterday. I was working at a camp in North Georgia, right in the middle of the Appalachian Trail. The town of Dallanega, where the trail starts, was very close. This place was also famous as a training spot for the army rangers, which made our camping trips even more thrilling. One summer, we planned to take the kids on a night walk. The weather was cool, the sky was clear, and the stars were shining brightly. It was the perfect night for cowboy camping sleeping under the sky on a tarp, without any tents. It was just us, the kids, and the beauty of nature. As night came, we sat around the campfire, telling stories and roasting marshmallows. The kids' laughter filled the air, their faces lit up by the fire. Slowly, they all fell asleep, soothed by the soft sounds of the forest. The next morning, I woke up to a sight that scared me. One of the counselors, a college girl, had a knife stuck in the ground next to her head. There was a note attached to the knife. It said, We could have killed you last night. Zoxo, the army rangers. I felt a chill as I read the note. The thought that we were not alone, that someone had been watching us, was scary. The idea of what could have happened if the army rangers were not friendly was too scary to think about. We quickly packed up and left the campsite, our minds full of fear and questions. Who were these army rangers? Why did they leave the note? Were they trying to scare us, or were they just reminding us of the dangers of the wilderness? In the following days, We took extra safety measures, making sure our campers were safe was our main concern. We never saw the army rangers again, but the memory of that morning stayed with us. It was a strong reminder of how unpredictable nature can be and the importance of being careful and prepared. This experience taught us a valuable lesson the wilderness is beautiful but can also be dangerous. It needs to be treated with respect and caution. And while we continued to enjoy our camping trips, We never forgot the note and the knife, a scary reminder of the hidden dangers that can be present. In the summer of 2011, my friend and I decided to go on a three-day camping trip to Beaver Lake, near Bolivar, Missouri. We spent the whole morning walking around, looking for the best place to set up our tent. After a quick nap, we were ready to go fishing. As we walked by the lake, we saw something strange. 
There were lots of fish bones and dead turtles on the shore. It was a scary sight. But we still decided to go ahead with our fishing. We waited for hours, but no fish bit. We were disappointed and decided to stop for the day. We went back to our campsite in the woods next to the lake. Usually, you would hear the sounds of animals at night and owl hooting, leaves rustling as animals moved around, the distant howl of a coyote. But that night, it was silent except for the occasional sound of an insect. The silence was creepy, and we didn't sleep well. The next morning, it was still quiet. There were no birds singing, no sounds of squirrels it was like the forest was empty. We realized that the lake, which should have been full of life, seemed to have killed all the animals. We had a hard decision to make. We only had enough water for the first night, and we didn't want to use the lake water. Feeling sad, we decided to pack up and leave early. As we drove away from Beaver Lake, the silence of the woods stayed in our minds. The trip was a strong reminder of how delicate nature is, and how important it is to respect it. It was a camping trip we would never forget, a scary adventure that taught us the importance of respecting nature. The memory of the quiet woods and the dead lake still stays with us, a creepy reminder of the silence that can fall on nature. It was a really dark night, and the only light was from the last bits of the campfire. I was lying on a plastic sheet, and the cold ground under me felt really different from the warmth of my sleeping bag. The forest around me was super quiet, not like it usually is at night. All of a sudden, I heard a weird noise from the left. It sounded like bushes moving. My heart was beating really fast as I sat up, trying to see in the dark. The noise got louder and closer. I could see the bushes moving, something was definitely there. I was really scared, thinking about all the dangerous things that could be hiding in the dark. I decided not to check it out, instead, I moved further into my sleeping bag, hoping whatever it was would just leave. Just when I was starting to feel a bit better, I felt my bag, which I was using as a pillow, start to move. At first it was slow, then it moved more quickly, until it was completely gone. The same noise was now right next to me. I started to panic. I was sure something was about to attack me. In a last-ditch effort to scare it away, I started making noises like a dog. I stood up, making loud noises into the dark, ready to face whatever was out there. Then, out of the dark, a small thing came out. It was a wombat, with my bag in its mouth. I felt so relieved when I realized I wasn't in danger. I was just dealing with a curious wombat. Looking back, it wasn't that scary, but for a 13-year-old me, alone in the woods, it was the most terrifying night of my life. It was a lesson learned, a reminder that not all noises at night are scary. Sometimes they're just wombats looking for a snack. I can still remember it like it was just yesterday. I was out hiking alone on a path I had walked many times before. The sun was out, birds were chirping, and the only other sound was the leaves moving in the wind. It was a great day for a hike. As I was walking up a big hill, I saw something move out of the corner of my eye. I looked and there it was a mountain lion. It was standing there, not more than thirty feet away from me. Its fur was shining in the sunlight, it was looking right at me, and it started to walk towards me. My heart was beating really fast. I could feel the rush of fear. I knew I couldn't run, I couldn't shout, I couldn't show I was scared. I stood still, trying to make myself look bigger, moving my arms slowly. The mountain lion kept getting closer, it kept looking at me. It was close enough now that I could see the muscles under its fur, how strong it was. It stopped just a few feet away from me, still looking at me. It felt like time had stopped. The only sound I could hear was my own heartbeat. Then, after what felt like forever, the mountain lion turned around and walked away. It went back into the bushes as quietly as it had come out. I was left standing there, my body shaking, my heart still beating fast. I kept on with my hike, but the happiness I had felt earlier was gone. Every little sound in the bushes, every twig breaking made me jump. Seeing the mountain lion had really scared me. 
When I finally got back to my car, I sat there for a while, trying to calm down. Seeing the mountain lion was really scary, but it also reminded me of how wild and beautiful nature is. It reminded me that we're not always the top predator we think we are, that we're just visitors in the big outdoors. Even now, years later, I still remember seeing the mountain lion. It still gives me the chills. But it also makes me respect the wild animals we share this planet with. It was a scary experience, but it also made me humble. It reminded me of where I stand in the big picture of things, and for that I'm thankful. One cool fall morning, I decided to go for a walk in the thick forest near my house. The leaves were turning colors, and the air was cool and clean. I had been walking these paths for a long time, but today, something felt off. As I went further into the forest, I noticed a strange quiet. The usual sounds of birds and leaves moving was gone. I felt a cold shiver, but I ignored it and kept going. Suddenly, I found a clearing. In the middle of it, I saw something that made my heart skip a beat. It was a body. A man, lying face down in the dirt. His clothes were ripped and dirty, and there was a patch of dried blood around him. Fear rushed through me. I wanted to run, to yell, but I was stuck in place. My mind was filled with questions. Who was this man? How did he get here? And most importantly, was I in danger? I knew I should tell someone, but a thought stopped me. What if I became the main suspect? I was alone in the forest with a dead body. It would be my word against, well, there was no one else. I decided to leave the body and keep walking, trying to act as if nothing had happened. But the image of the lifeless body was stuck in my mind, haunting me with every step I took. Days turned into weeks, and the secret weighed on me. I stayed away from the forest, the guilt eating at me every time I looked at the trees from my window. I kept expecting the police to show up at my door, but they never did. One day, I saw a news report about a missing person found dead in the woods. It was him. The report said he was a known criminal, wanted for several crimes. They thought someone had killed him, but had no leads. A wave of relief hit me. I was not a suspect. But the relief was short-lived replaced by a deep sense of guilt. I had seen the body and done nothing. I had let fear control me. From that day forward, I promised to never let fear control my actions. I learned a hard lesson. The forest no longer felt the same to me, but it served as a constant reminder of the choice I made that day. In the end, I was left with a scary memory and a heavy conscience. But I also gained a new view on life and the choices we make. It was a tough experience, one that I wouldn't wish on anyone, but it changed me in ways I never expected. It was a normal Friday night in my small town. The sun had gone down, and the moon was the only light, making long shadows that moved with the leaves. I decided to go for a walk in the woods near my house, a place I knew really well. I took my flashlight, put on my boots, and went into the night. The woods were super quiet, the only sound was the leaves under my boots and sometimes an owl. I had been walking for about half an hour when I saw something that scared me. There, in the middle of the path, was a woman. She was dressed in all white, her clothes shining a bit in the moonlight. She stood really still, her face hidden by a hood. I felt a shiver. This was not a ghost or a creature from a story. This was a real person, standing alone in the woods at night. I didn't know why she was there, and I didn't want to find out. I felt scared, and without thinking, I turned around and started walking away. I walked fast, not daring to look back. The trees seemed to close in around me, and every sound of leaves made me jump. I kept my eyes on the path my flashlight making a small circle of light that moved with each step I took. After what felt like forever, I saw my house. I felt relieved as I stepped onto my porch and closed the door behind me. I was safe. I locked the door and closed the curtains, blocking out the night. I sat down on my couch, my heart still beating fast. 
I tried to understand what I had seen, but I couldn't. Who was that woman? Why was she standing in the middle of the path? I didn't have the answers, and I wasn't sure I wanted to know. That night, I lay in bed, thinking about what happened. The image of the woman in white was stuck in my mind. I knew I would never forget that night, the night that turned a normal walk into a scary experience. From that day on, I never went walking in the woods at night. I couldn't get rid of the feeling of being scared whenever I thought about it. The woods had always been a peaceful and quiet place for me, but now, they felt mysterious and scary. In the end, I realized that not everything can be explained, and sometimes, it's better to not know everything. The woman in white stayed a mystery, a scary reminder of the unknown that can be found even in the most familiar places. I've always loved the quiet of the woods near my town. The sound of leaves moving, the owls calling, the cool night air it was my happy place. One summer, I decided to camp there. I put up my tent, made a small fire, and as the sun went down, the usual sounds of the forest helped me fall asleep. I woke up suddenly in the middle of the night. My watch said 3 a.m. The fire had gone out. The forest was very quiet. I decided to go for a short walk, something I often did when I couldn't sleep. I took my flashlight and went out into the dark. The light from my flashlight cut through the dark, making long shadows between the trees. The forest was quiet except for the sound of leaves crunching under my boots. But then I heard it. A soft sound behind me. I stopped and turned around, but saw nothing. I thought it was a small animal and kept walking but the sound kept happening. Every few minutes, I would hear it again. It sounded like footsteps. My heart started to beat fast. I stopped and turned around again. This time, I saw him. A man, standing in the middle of the path, lit up by the light from my flashlight. He was tall, his face hidden by a hood. He stood still, looking at me. We looked at each other, and he ran into the woods. I stood still, my heart beating hard in my chest. I pointed my flashlight in the direction he had run, but he was gone. The forest was quiet again. I quickly went back to my campsite, packed up my stuff, and left. The peaceful place I once knew felt scary and strange. I couldn't stop feeling like I was being watched. Even now, I still don't know who that man was or what he was doing there. The memory of that night still scares me. The woods no longer feel like a happy place to me. They remind me of the unknown, of the fear I felt that night. I still go hiking, but never at night, and never alone. That experience taught me an important lesson nature is beautiful, but it also has mysteries that can be scary. It's important to respect its rules and always be aware of what's around you. And sometimes, the scariest things aren't the animals that hide in the shadows, but the unknown actions of other people. It was a cold night in the middle of the woods. I had put up my tent in a small open area, surrounded by tall trees that moved slowly in the wind. The moon was a thin slice, making long, spooky shadows that moved around my campsite. The only sounds were the leaves moving and the occasional sound of an owl. I had just gotten into my sleeping bag, the tiredness from the day's walk slowly making me sleepy. Suddenly, I heard a soft sound outside my tent. My heart was beating fast as I listened carefully. The sound got louder, and then I heard it the clear sound of someone, or something, trying to open my tent door. I was scared, but I knew I had to do something. I shouted, I've got a gun! Get away from me! The words echoed through the quiet forest, breaking the peace of the night. There was a moment of silence, and then I heard the sound of quick footsteps moving away into the darkness. I lay there, wide awake, my heart still beating fast. I didn't dare to move or make a sound. I listened to the night, every sound of leaves, every break of a twig, made louder by the silence and my fear. I didn't know who had tried to get inside my tent, and the not knowing made it even more scary. As the night went on, the rush of fear slowly went away, replaced by a deep tiredness. 
But sleep was a far-off thought, pushed away by the fear and the scary event. I spent the rest of the night in a state of high alert, jumping at every sound. When morning finally came, I came out of my tent, the events of the night still fresh in my mind. The forest, lit by the soft morning light, seemed calm, almost peaceful. But the peace did nothing to take away the fear and worry that had settled in my heart. I packed up my campsite, every move automatic, my mind still going over the events of the night. As I put on my backpack and started my walk back to the city, I couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched. The forest, once a place of peace and quiet, now felt scary and threatening. That night stays in my memory, a scary reminder of the unknown dangers that hide in the woods. I still don't know who tried to get inside my tent that night, and I probably never will. But the fear and the chills it gives me are as real today as they were that night. It was a bright, sunny morning when I started my hike. I knew the path was in an area where bears lived, but I thought I wouldn't see one. The sun was out, birds were singing, and I could smell the pine trees. It was a great day for a hike. About an hour into my walk, things felt different. The birds stopped singing, and everything was quiet. I felt a chill run down my spine. I turned a corner on the path and stopped. There was a black bear. It had its back to me and didn't know I was there. My heart was beating fast. I knew I couldn't run that would make it chase me. I remembered that I had read somewhere that the best thing to do was to slowly back away and not look it in the eyes. So, that's what I did. I took one step back, then another, always looking at the ground. The bear didn't move. It was like it was frozen, a statue in the middle of the path. I kept backing away, each step taking me further from the bear. After what felt like forever, I was far enough away to turn and walk faster. I didn't stop until I was safe in my car. As I drove away, my heart still beating fast, I couldn't help but wonder what would have happened if the bear had seen me. Would it have attacked? Or just run away? I'll never know. But one thing is sure that hike reminded me of how powerful and unpredictable nature can be. It was scary, but it also made me respect nature and the animals that live in it. From that day on, I was more careful when hiking in areas where bears live. I carry bear spray, make noise as I walk, and always stay far away when I see animals. Seeing the black bear was scary, but it also taught me an important lesson about respecting nature and its animals. I had always wanted to go camping in Wyoming, the best state of America for camping. I had heard so many stories about the beautiful scenery, the abundant wildlife, and the peaceful atmosphere. I decided to rent a cabin in Scott State Park, a 1,280-acre park that featured a stunning lake, a historic pueblo, and several hiking trails. It sounded like the perfect place to relax and enjoy nature. I arrived at the park on a sunny afternoon and checked in at the ranger station. The ranger gave me a map and a key to my cabin which was located at the far end of the park, near the lake. He warned me that there was no cell phone service or Wi-Fi in that area, and that I should be careful of bears and other wild animals. He also told me that I was the only one staying in that cabin, and that the nearest neighbor was about a mile away. I thanked him and drove to my cabin. The cabin was small but cozy, with a wooden porch, a fireplace, and a kitchenette. It had one bedroom, a bathroom, and a living room with a sofa bed. I unpacked my bags and settled in. I decided to go for a walk around the lake before it got dark. I grabbed my camera and a bottle of water and headed out. The lake was breathtaking, with clear blue water reflecting the sky and the mountains. I saw some ducks and geese swimming on the surface, and some fish jumping out of the water. I walked along the shore, taking pictures and enjoying the fresh air. I felt so calm and happy, like I had left all my worries behind. I was about to turn back to the cabin when I noticed a small wooden sign that said, Trail to Pueblo. I was curious about the historic site, so I decided to follow the trail. It was a narrow dirt path that led into the woods. I walked for about 15 minutes, until I reached a clearing. 
There, I saw the ruins of an ancient stone building, surrounded by a wooden fence. It looked like it had been abandoned for centuries. I approached the fence and read a plaque that explained the history of the Pueblo. It said that it was built by the Pueblo Indians around 1200 AD, and that it was a ceremonial center and a trading post. It also said that it was the site of a massacre in 1864, when a group of soldiers attacked the Pueblo and killed most of the inhabitants. The survivors fled and never returned. The plaque ended with a warning. This is a sacred and haunted place. Respect the spirits of the dead and do not enter. I felt a chill run down my spine as I read the last sentence. I looked at the Pueblo and wondered what horrors had happened there. I felt a sudden urge to leave, but I also felt a strange attraction to the place. I wanted to see what was inside. I ignored the warning and climbed over the fence. I walked towards the entrance of the Pueblo, which was a small hole in the wall. I had to crouch down to get in. As soon as I entered I regretted my decision. It was dark and cold inside, and I could smell something rotten. I turned on the flashlight on my camera and looked around. I saw piles of bones, skulls, and pottery shards. I saw blood stains on the walls and the floor. I saw a fire pit with charred remains. I realized that I was standing in a mass grave. I felt sick and terrified. I wanted to get out of there as fast as I could. I turned around and ran towards the exit. But as I did, I heard a loud thud behind me. I looked back and saw that the entrance had collapsed. A pile of rocks and dirt had blocked the hole. I was trapped. I screamed and pounded on the wall, hoping that someone would hear me. But no one came. I was alone in the dark, with the dead. I felt a cold hand touch my shoulder. I turned around and saw a faceless figure standing behind me. It was wearing a feather headdress and a leather tunic. It was one of the Pueblo Indians. It was a ghost. It grabbed me by the neck and lifted me off the ground. I struggled and kicked, but it was too strong. It opened its mouth and let out a blood-curdling scream. I felt its teeth sink into my flesh. I felt its breath on my face. I felt its hatred in my soul. I blacked out. I don't know how long I was unconscious. When I woke up, I was lying on the ground, outside the fence. I was covered in blood and dirt. I had bite marks all over my body. I was alive, but barely. I crawled to the trail and followed it back to the lake. I saw my cabin in the distance. I saw a light on the porch. I saw a figure standing there, waiting for me. It was the ranger. He saw me and ran towards me. He helped me up and carried me to his truck. He drove me to the nearest hospital. He saved my life. He told me that he had come to check on me and that he had found my camera on the trail. He had looked at the pictures and had seen the one I had taken of the Pueblo. He had recognized it and had known that I was in trouble. He had gone to the Pueblo and had found the collapsed entrance. He had dug me out and had brought me back. He asked me what had happened. I told him everything. He believed me. He said that he had heard stories about the Pueblo and that he had seen things there that he couldn't explain. He said that I was lucky to be alive and that I should never go back there. I agreed. I never wanted to see that place again. I never wanted to go camping again. I never wanted to leave my home again. I survived, but I was scarred for life. I still have nightmares about the Pueblo and the ghost that attacked me 